Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Quincy at the John Wood Mansion, home of the Quincy and Adams County Historical Society, where they know that historical places don't only include old buildings. They also include aspects about the way people lived, their flower gardens, their uh, herb gardens, sometimes a restored prairie garden to show what the uh, pioneers had to go through to get here. Well, here at the John Wood Mansion, they highlight all three of these gardens and offer the public a chance to go through. Jan Limebeck, we, we call this the parlor garden because yes. it's right off, it's, it could be a part of the house. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just right off the side of the house, the John Wood Mansion. And you've been helping take care of this garden for three years, so yes. you know it pretty darn well. Yes. When I first saw it, I was struck by the fact that it looked like it was almost twin sides, but not quite. What was the thinking there? Back in, in the day, the, the, the 1800s, it was very common to have what's called a mirror garden, where the two sides of the garden would, would be mirrors. Uh, that has been somewhat lost today due to, due to flowers uh, dying, due to a tree that grew and, and, and cast too much shade in part of the okay, garden. Okay, some, some of the um, plants couldn't thrive because right, of it. Okay. Right, yep. so, so we are going to work towards making it a, a parlor garden again. Mm -hmm. this, this garden is under restoration uh, as some plants have, have, have gotten overly aggressive and we've had, had some, some weeds yeah. issues, uh, very invasive weed issues that we've had to eradicate. Yeah, well we also had COVID come along which put through a, a sort of a, yes. a, an, an, an ax into everybody's plans. Exactly. But, but you can still see what the intention was and yes. it's gorgeous and here we are, it's August and things really look fresh, you know, so it's, yes. been, a, it's been a good year, hasn't yes, it? Yes, it has. Let's walk down to the end and see what we start with down here. The first thing my eye catches is this beautiful, dramatic, it looks almost looks like a hibiscus plant. And it is a hibiscus. It's a much hardier hibiscus than its tropical cousin. Mm -hmm. It is a native of North America. It likes to live around waterways. And so it was a natural addition to gardens uh, of, of early America. Mm -hmm. it, it, its seeds were sent back to England in about 1724, and it, it became very popular in I Europe as, why. as well. I can it see has why. big showy blooms yeah. that, that, that come on in about mid-July and last until October. Mm -hmm. And you know these are this is really gets pretty now. A lot of these things are not in bloom right now, but a lot of them are too. Right. This little pinkish red uh, number is gorgeous. That that is verbenia, mm -hmm. and and it was it was actually a a a Illinois State Fair um, uh, flower of of 1867. No kidding. Yes. So the, it, the state flower for the fair of 1867. Huh. Yes. Okay. Um, We've seen these, these are quite common. I don't know, is that a black-eyed Susan? A black-eyed Susan, okay. yes. And I don't know what the little trumpet-like flowers are there, this but they're is, gorgeous. This is, this is foxglove. Okay. And foxglove has, it's, it's, it's highly poisonous, but it is of the digitalis genus. Mm -hmm. it, it is the plant that, that we get the heart medicine digitalis from. Oh. Uh, it's, it's been used as a medicine, even though it's poisonous since, since the 1250. But now it they they can isolate out the 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 property that makes it medicinal and mm -hmm. not poisonous, and so and so that's mm -hmm. that's digitalis. Now gas plant. You were telling me this is a rare plant, and they don't get very big. This is kind of an old plant too. This is a very old plant. This the gas plant was popular in the European gardens in the 1600s, mm -hmm. and in the 1800s it became very popular here in America. It, it, it's named the gas plant because it, it, it has a volatile oil to it that on a hot summer day, it can actually give a lemon scent to the garden. Mm -hmm. the, other, the other point is that, and this, this got um, pruned off, but it, it gets a beautiful pinky purple spike of flowers mm -hmm. in the spring. When its seed pods uh, dry, it, 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 
it has a volatile oil in, in it in more concentration. And on a hot summer night, it, if there's no wind, a very hot summer night, if you put a, a, a flame beside that, that sea pod, it, it, it supposedly will, will flare. Um, it's been also reported it, 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 that it has spontaneously combusted mm -hmm. on <laughs> on very hot summer nights. Okay, <laughs> let's not see that happen. Yes, let's, let's okay. not. Now, of course, geranium, that wasn't, that's not one of your perennials, but it's here no, to dress it's things a, up. But, but it, it, it is a period annual. Yeah, the cornflower, I've, I've not seen that. That's, that's gorgeous. Uh, Those cornflower, um, it's, it's also called, called bachelor buttons. Mm -hmm. Huh, very nice. Now, in this, this, now from here, here on over to this, it does start, it looks like the mirror garden again. And so these, these real showy flowers at yes. the edges, what are those? These, this is, this is phlox. Mm -hmm. This is a, a North American native flower. And it, it too was uh, um, sent, sent back to England where it was um, very popular mm -hmm. in, in the, in the cottage gardens. Yeah. And you've got these two, uh, now here's a, a deep bluish one that's mm -hmm. kind of spiky looking, and then you've got this one here. Is that it's, a Speedwell by any chance? Is, is that speed, what that's called? Speedwell, yeah, oh, Veronica. Um, yeah. Very, very nice. And of course you have some roses. I guess the roses aren't, right now, they're, are they between blue? No, there's, there's, there's one right over here that's blooming. Yes, yeah. there's, there's a few, a few roses that, that are, are blooming. Mm -hmm. um, this this particular rose i'm sorry i don't know what it is it it's not on any of the garden maps mm -hmm. from the past that i have but i'm sure it that it is a a a period um, heirloom yeah. rose. And, and many of these this garden's been here many years so many yes. of these plants have been here the whole time haven't yes they? yes now here's one that i wasn't aware of until i saw saw this tick seed right here Tixie. I'm going to get out of my shadow off there. <laughs> um, Look, it's, it's being pollinated right now too. There's a lot of bees around here. They love this little garden. They they do. With the variety of, of flowers and the constant blooming times, we we have lots of pollinators, mm -hmm. uh, lots of lots of butterflies. Uh, as the as the cone heads dry on on the echinacea, we will see the songbirds particularly the goldfinch uh, eating the Is seeds. that right? Okay, so we should see some of those around here because a lot of those have dried up now. So yes. So those should be ready to dry. Yes, last, last week I did see a, a, a goldfinch uh -huh. here. Um, and you, we talked about the bachelor buttons and there's a plant that has mm -hmm. has even more of that going on. It, what was that called again? Ba uh, the cornflower. Cornflower and bachelor some, buttons. Some, some people call it <laughs> call it bachelor buttons. Uh -huh. Bachelor buttons. Um, okay, and this is the mallow again, or what I call yes, the hibiscus. The, the rose mallow. Mm -hmm. Yes. They're, on the other side of, of, of these tall li lilies is false indigo. And false indigo is, is a... Can you take us to it? Yes. Point to us? False ah, indigo... Okay has has is also a north american native plant the native americans used it for blue dye and also for for curing toothaches and the children would use the dried seed pods for for rattles it was it was uh seeds were sent over to england and and it, it was used in their ornamental gardens. Unfortunately, over in Europe, it has turned into a very invasive, noxious weed that is uh, spread along the waterways because these pods will float. Mm -hmm. Does this bloom at any time? Uh, it does. pods are about it? It, it does. Yeah. Um, it, the, it's, not, it, it's not much of a bloom. Yeah, it's, yeah, okay. Well, come on up here with me because I want to ask you one more question about a garden like this. Yes. Um, I would assume that this would have been, of course, the Wood family was wealthy, mm -hmm. you know, and this was a garden like they would have had. Yes. Not every family had a garden like this, but as the years went on and, and, and the society got more and more prosperous, mm -hmm. it was they were able to take their herb and their other edible gardens out of circulation and, and start to enjoy flowers again. 
Exactly. Uh, the, the, those who had come from the East Coast, they, they had enjoyed flower gardens, and so as they be became uh, able to um, purchase their produce at, at, at produce markets, this was about the 1850s, then, then they were able to a actually enjoy their gardening with, with flowers. Mm -hmm. They traded seeds amongst themselves, and with Quincy being a hub of transportation, the, the steamships, the trains, they were able to get seeds through seed catalogs. Um, I, I was um, um, surprised that seed catalogs in America started in 1790 mm -hmm. in Philadelphia. Oh, my God. That surprises and, me too. And yeah. so, so, so they they were able to get seeds mm -hmm. for for things that that had been native in Europe, mm -hmm. like the gas plant. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jan. Interesting tour. Okay, thank you very much, mm -hmm. Jack Freiberg. It, it's interesting. We often don't think of historical societies dealing with gardens. We, uh, we think of old homes, old properties, you know, uh, historic buildings, things like that. But actually gardens supported almost everything that people did. Yes, yes they did. Um, you know, and here when you really got the, the three different gardens representing three different phases of the settling of this area. Um, one, the, the uh, natural prairie garden which shows the tall grass prairie and mm -hmm. how, how tough that would have been to either break it or to walk through it. Oh my goodness and then the herb garden when they first settled mm -hmm. in to go ahead and have so yeah. they could have that for their own yeah. you know because they often planted seasonal trees too they would plant apricot trees so they'd have apricots and and pears and mm -hmm. apple trees so that different times of year they had yeah. different fruits that would go right yeah. along in conjunction you, with the you herb mentioned, garden. You mentioned the prairie garden and you can see that there's a sample of what they might have, the Bahainers might have encountered in the early uh, to mid 1800s coming across the Illinois Prairie. Um, and you can imagine walking or getting a wagon and, and an oxen or an ox through, through that. Mark, I would stay on the rivers like everybody actually did. <laughs> Actually, I'd be sure, but but you couldn't always do that. If you no. if you were if you had your property to get to, uh, you had to go overland. And, Absolutely. Uh, and and of course, well, and and you know the ones that came from the East Coast that came from New York, you know, because this this area was settled both by folks that came from New York and and uh, Connecticut mm -hmm. East Coast, like John Wood did, who came over ground to get here, um, versus the folks that came in like my German ancestors mm -hmm. who came mostly came up through New Orleans. So, yeah. you know, they, and, and they were both, both groups were early settlers here. Yeah. But how they got here, two totally different ways. A absolutely. And over here, now this cabin of course wasn't here, but it was moved here, uh, an 1835 vintage cabin. Yes. But in the yard of that cabin here on the side is an herb garden. And of course, almost every family who had enough, a, a piece of property like that was growing herbs and edible things and things to spice up their food a little bit because for heaven's sake, they, well, their diet was so limited. Well, the r reality of it all was everybody then had pretty much had to be self-sufficient. And mm -hmm. if you could do anything to increase your quality of life by growing your own stuff in your yard, whether it be fruit or herbs or vegetables, whatever, mm -hmm. um, that was a very commonplace situation. Mm -hmm. The, the people that take care of these gardens are here today. And uh, what we're going to do is, now we've seen the flower garden, but, or the parlor garden, but we're going to take a little quick uh, through the herb garden and also through the, through the prairie plantation over here. So thanks for joining us and it, thanks for making all this available. It's a pleasure, Mark. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Janet Summy, we were just talking about this cabin and a family in the 1830s, for yes. instance. And we were talking about this little side yard that they may or may not have had next to the house. But most houses of this vintage probably did have what they called an herb garden. You know, a place where, I mean, you used every bit of property you could because That's you had right. a family to feed and they didn't have a varied diet. So they, they wanted all they could, they could grow year round, right? It was all they could do, all they could have. They couldn't go to a grocery store, so they had to provide for it, forage for it, and um, use what they had. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, they, they didn't really have all, was irrigation systems, sprinkler Correct. systems like we had. So they had to plant things that could kind of be on their own and, and right. come as, you know, as whatever weather came. These were hardy, hardy plants, weren't they? These, That's these right, herbs. they were. Take us, start us out here because this very interesting looking specimen here, 
Muline, is that right? Mullen. 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 I've never this seen or Mullen. heard of it before. Tell if, me about if it. If you look on the roadsides, they grow wild everywhere. And right now they are big and tall, and some are green. This one has uh, spent its time, and it's just about done. Mm -hmm. It's full of seeds, and the seeds will last for a long time. Um, the seeds will drop, and they will live more than one year. There, and there's hundreds of seeds in the in, in individual mullein plant. Were, were these flowers? But yes, yeah, it did okay. have an indescript uh, little yellow flower. Not, not much to look at. No, that's right. But boy, right. it is loaded with seeds. That's right, it is. So these probably really come up very easily, don't they? they? Do. You could have a whole bunch of these. They do. Did they eat? Did they eat this, or did they use it? For no, some the mullein plant had large leaves. They mm -hmm. were large and broad. Mm -hmm. And years ago, uh, the Indians would take a, a large leaf and roll it, and they would smoke it. Oh. They learned to smoke it, and by smoking it, they found that that helped with um, uh, congestion and, oh. and, huh. and that kind of thing. Yeah. So it was healthy for them, and I know they passed that on to the early colonists as well. I'll be darned. That's interesting. Now, lavender, of course, we all know that lavender smells. Can I touch it? You can. It smells really good, and I imagine that what they were doing was... This is the way you do it. You take it gently mm. through your hands and then smell, mm -hmm. and it's, it's lovely. It is. It, and of course, they were probably always on their way to freshen up a little place like this. Very few windows. That's right. Uh, the family's not bathing very often, That's so anything right. they can do to freshen up the cabin a little bit. Uh, a woman would wear uh, use a nosegay of lavender, mm -hmm. or um, if you walk past it, it you can it brush it. If if you brush by it, you smell it, mm -hmm. and it lends some fragrance. Yeah. Okay, now here's one I hadn't seen before, and I'm going to ask you to explain explain it to me because I'd never even heard of tansy. This is tansy. Tansy gets to be tall, and it's very invasive, spreads a lot. Um, a lot of times the mothers would take uh, sprigs of tansy and break it off and sweep their wood floor. This, or, is, a whisk, the, this is a whisk broom. Yes, it's like a whisk broom. <laughs> or their uh, okay. dirt floor. Yeah, and it, it flowers, too. It See flowers, the flowers, and there? the yellow flower was used as a, a dye for plants. Oh, okay. But another thing that, <coughs> pardon me, the tansy was used for is um, they used tansy, the reason she used, swept the floor was to keep the bugs away. Mm -hmm. And they would take a sprigs of tansy and lay it in their straw mattresses to help keep to the bugs keep away. To keep the bugs away. That's okay. where we get, don't let the bed bugs bite. Okay. So you use Fascinating. this. Fascinating. Yes. Okay, so they didn't eat it, but they found plenty of uses and for the, it. And the little critters didn't like it. <laughs> Now these violets, everybody knows all about them. Dandelions have all kinds of edible uses, don't they? Every part of the dandelion was used. Uh, the roots were used to make coffee, a chicory coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, the leaves, this, it's the first thing that came up in the spring and the last thing to go dormant in the fall. Mm, what a gift, huh? They looked for it and waited for it because they were so eager to have something green in mm -hmm. their diet because it had been a long winter mm -hmm. without anything yeah, green. Yeah, potatoes and tubers and things, beans, things right, you could dry, but right. not something fresh. They yeah. liked it. They didn't know why they liked it, but it was healthy. Mm -hmm. Helped and, their digestion, I imagine. It, and it was full of potassium, yeah. so yeah. it was very important to them. Horseradish. Now, some people love it, some people hate it, but there's one thing you can say about it. Everybody's got an opinion. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. It's very invasive. That's why it's, you'll find that this is planted in a pot because any part of the root that leaves, oh, stays okay. uh, will grow. Yeah, you don't want that. Now, the, and it's the roots that you grind up for, That's right. uh, for the, the flavorful for flavor, know, yeah, yes. enhancement, flavor enhancement. And it was also used uh, medicinally too. Um, it, it's a, it's a, as a root product, a root crop, most root crops are very medicinal and it mm -hmm. was helped with a lot of illnesses. Mm -hmm. In, indigo was used as a dye. It was. Um, and there were some other plants that, that used as dyes too, but probably indigo was the most um, the most successful because yes. it, it had a very deep and uh, you know sure dye. It really, yes. you could really, if you dyed it, you, you knew it was going to stay dyed. Yes, yes. All right. Now the columbines, I've seen these flowers a lot, but I never thought of them in an herb garden for any reason. Well, um, it's something that would have been um, natural to the, this environment. Mm -hmm. It grew wild here. And they're beautiful. When they are flowering, they are they're beautiful. so beautiful. So it added a little beauty to mm -hmm. um, the... And across the, the way here, soapwort. Yes. Now this one is blooming. Not yes. everything's blooming in August, but... Right. Soapwort was important because they used it 
to make a little soap. You could take the leaves and rub the leaves, get it wet, rub the leaves together, and it created a soap-like little, little bubbles, which was used to cleanse and to clean oh, their hands. Doggone. Yes. I didn't, didn't, had no idea. Yes. And pretty little flower. Yes, it is. It also needs to be staked up, but. Uh-huh. Um, now the echinacea, we saw these in, in the uh, parlor garden. Yes. The, people know them as cone flowers. Mm -hmm. um, did they have any use besides just looking, I know the bees love them too, they, and the birds love yes. them, but did the people use them for anything? Yes, it's a very medicinal plant. Uh, it's an antibacterial, antimicrobial plant that the uh, early settlers learned uh, helped them and healed some of their illnesses. What, was it the leaves? That, that yes, they the leaves. They okay. would make a tea, cut it and make mm -hmm. a tea, or rub the leaves together. Oh. Yes. Cup, cup plant. Now these, this is a pretty big dramatic plant when you think about how tall this one's getting, and it's getting that way under this tree, so it's That's not right. get, hardly getting any sun at all. That's right. Do you know it's why amazing. it's called a cup plant? It's called a cup plant because it has alternating leaves that um, form mm -hmm. like a cup when rain falls. So for the early settlers and travelers, this might have provided a spot of water when they were really, you really thirsty. You could get a sip. Yes. Yeah, you could get a yes. sip. Daisies and black-eyed Susans. Again, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any therapeutic properties in theirs, mm -hmm. but they Not, certainly are pretty. Yes, they are. The wild geranium, did it serve any other purpose besides uh, Not just Not that fun? I know of. Mm -hmm. I just know that it grew naturally mm -hmm. here. And nasturtium, which is this beautiful little orange flower. And did the leaves provide any... any uh... No, the, the flower is edible. Oh, okay. Um, and it's a good companion plant in a garden today, I know that. Mm -hmm. Rhubarb, of course. Now that's these big, these big uh, stalks yes. over here. Yes. And of course the, the stalk part is the edible part. You don't want to eat this. This is poisonous. It is. But this was very helpful for constipation, would relieve constipation. And it's an early, early spring plant. Yeah, so it, this will not, like, like those, these stalks wouldn't be any good now. But in, oh. in the spring they, they are. Huh? They're all right. They they're, are. they're probably not as uh, yeah. fragrant and as... As Everybody's heard of rhubarb pie, of course. Oh yes. And so, yes. but they they would use it for other things, I guess, as well. Mm -hmm. Something fresh for them to eat early and in the spring. This is a good example because you've got you've got all these spices here, right, in, right yes. in one spot. And you know, we were talking about their limited diet. You know, they, they may have had some salt pork, or they may have had some chicken. They they probably didn't have a lot of vegetable varieties to go to. So anything they could do to spice up their food a little bit Absolutely. would really help. And they probably brought these things, these seeds with them, because that was one of the first things they had to get established once they got their cabin, was something to provide food for them yeah. and to help them survive. Right off the bat. So they would have wanted some that, some that come up in 30, 60 days. They well, would have wanted to have something. You know, whenever they, spring ar yeah. arrived, yeah. yes. Okay, so we have parsley, basil, th thyme, oregano, mm -hmm. um, Rosemary, those are all staples. Yes. S sage is this large, larger green one over here, right? Yes. Sage. And um, what's that one right there? This is a, a basil, a different kind of basil. Oh, different basil. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and then there was also mint. And mint yes. was, was good for a variety of things too. Oh, here, garlic, onion, of course. Those things would really help make a meal. Yes, they foraged for that all the time. Um, I, I mentioned now that, boy, the bees, the bees and the wasps, they just love this mint, don't they? Yes, Look at they them, do. they're all over it. Yeah. Um, the mint was helpful with uh, digestive issues. And can it I helped, pick some too? Because sure. it makes your hands smell. So sure, good. clean their breath. Mm. And um, it grew a lot oh, of man. times along the banks of the creeks, you know, it would grow wild. And mm -hmm. they would forage for that because they needed it and mm -hmm. used it. And you could put it in your water probably didn't have tea. They may they may have had some tea, but that sure. might have been a treat too. That's you know, right. not a daily That's drink. Right. And Joe Pie weed was an important one. Oh no, wait, too. say that again. What's that Joe called? Pie Joe weed. Pie Weed. I think this is a very interesting story. Joe Pie was an Indian shaman who taught the Indians and the early settlers um, to use this because it helped uh, get rid of typhus. He healed so many people because of what he did with this weed, and mm -hmm. I don't know what he did. Mm -hmm. But but, he's, but his name lived on forever because of it. But his name lived, huh? yes. He, he must have been very impressive to, yes. to a number of people. 
and his name was Joe Pye. And you know, it's a, it's it's a very interesting looking plant. Look how tall it gets, and I'll bet you. Well, we're gonna. I think we're gonna see one over in the in the other in the yes. prairie garden, which is much taller. It gets yes. real tall. It has it? more sun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very pretty. Very pretty. Okay. And then there's the mint, and I think the mint is sort of at the end of our our road, isn't it? Or is there anything else over here? Oh, yeah. bee balm. Bee balm. Oh yes, the bee balm. Monarda. It and it. You can tell it's hardy because it's growing in gravel. Look <laughs> at this. Yes, it is hardy. Yes. Um, and bee balm was. Uh, I don't really know too much about bee balm mm -hmm. except that um, it was growing here. Except the bees love it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When it's flowering, the bees are in love. <laughs> they are. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Jack Ball, we mentioned earlier that you can imagine now you've got a nice prairie landscape going on here. What it would have been like trying to get your wagon and your family across this? Can it, you imagine? The, look how tall and thick it all is. It is. You planted every one of these seeds, didn't you, that, that created this? Well, yeah, I, I started them and then they, they, they self-seeded. <laughs> well, nature's wonderful, isn't it? Yes. It can really do it. One of the things, people talk about a lot about milkweed now because everybody's got the monarch on their mind and the monarchs love to plant their, their seeds on these milkweeds, don't they? Yeah, they're eggs. They're, I'm sorry, they're eggs. Tell us about how that happens. Well, I don't know if you wanted me to show the egg mass on the back. There probably is one with some eggs on it if we can. There's right there. Oh, okay. Monarch eggs. Okay, and those will become caterpillars, right? Hopefully, yeah. Uh, May, uh, August is there is there time to move? Okay. What what is this here? This is the prairie sunflower, and it has a green center. It has the green center. Okay, that's how you know that that's what that is. Right. Uh huh. Is this is this different? That that's sneeze weed. Oh, sneeze weed. Okay, it looks kind of the same. Sneeze. Yeah. It, does it make you sneeze? Uh, no, it does not. <laughs> I, mean, this, I bet it makes somebody sneeze. It falls over real easy. Mm -hmm. and, and it drops seeds like crazy. So you're probably thinning that out all the time, aren't you? I am. Yep. You're, you're a good man. You work hard. Yeah. These ornamental grasses are pretty, and I guess there were a lot of those. This is switchgrass. Uh -huh. I have some uh, big blue stem right there. Is it behind the sneeze weed? Or behind that? Yeah, it's right. This this is this. Oh, that's big blue stem. Okay. Yeah, this right. is this is the big blue stem uh -huh. here. There's better blossom of okay. it. Okay. And we move down, and of course we saw the cup plant earlier. That's the one that catches the water, right? Right. Yeah. Look how big that gets. My goodness. Yeah. When the when it rains, the water will fill these voids between the mm -hmm. two leaves here, and then birds can drink out of them and insects. Very impressive. Jack Ball, thank you for, uh, for for your work here and also for sharing it with us. Appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. Um, these three gardens are on private property, but you are welcome to visit the, uh, the Quincy and Adams County Historical Society and wander through here. In fact, if you'd like a, to arrange a tour, they encourage you to call the office here and they'll uh, have somebody like, like Jack take you through. With another Illinois story in Quincy, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, Illinois Arts Council Agency, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you.